This is a new episode of We Are 757 The Show. We have a homie Zach from Prep Prep Hoops. Sorry. Good to be here. What's up with you, man? How you doing? I'm good. It's crazy out here. How's the uh virus been treating you? I mean, I, it's weird because I work with kids, I run child care programs. Uh -huh. And I haven't seen a kid in like two weeks. <laughs> uh -huh. So it's a bit weird, but I mean, you know, it's crazy with the basketball stuff. Uh, yeah, everything shut down. <laughs> yeah, but you know, with prep hoop guys and other analysts, our stuff's rocketed because uh -huh. colleges can't get out. Yeah, so yeah. they're asking us about kids they didn't see. But true, true. It's good. It's bad. It's a little bit of both. <laughs> it sucks for us mixtapes guys because, I mean, now we just gotta go through our season clips and just start making season highlights. But mm -hmm. we wasn't prepared for, I guess, right now. Even though with states, we was looking forward to those state championship games. Especially on rematches. Yeah, Green, <laughs> Green Run Norview is going to be crazy. Yeah, yeah, that first one was crazy. And then I, I felt like Wilson was going to give a better match for Kings for uh, the second game. So it was well. They're athletic. Yeah. It would have been a good game. <laughs> I mean, second time, man, you never know what's going to happen the second time you play. That's a fact. So, like, Norview, man, I don't know if you can catch them twice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you catch those twice. <laughs> yeah. So, um, how'd you uh, start writing, man? You know, start writing with prep hoops. Um, so I played back in high school, like I told you, I played for Bishop, uh -huh. um, sat out my last year and when I got in college, I actually put on like 15 pounds of muscle, I decided to grow then, uh -huh. and so I got coordinated with my body, I was like, okay, I'm going to start hooping again. Um, I was planning on transferring to a D2, and then like two weeks before I was at an open gym, I got horse collared and a big man came down on my ankle. Mm. Shredded all my ligaments, man. Doc said he can't play anymore. So I could lie and say I was going to the NBA, but <laughs> it sucked at the time, man. So, really? But when I grew up, I uh, when I was younger, I had to teach myself the game because I didn't have anyone to teach me. Okay. So I kind of learned the game of basketball mentally before I learned it physically. So, you know, I've always been a thinker on the court. I've always been trying to break people down. Uh -huh. And so naturally when the prep hoops position opened up, I'm already, I already have, uh, you know, writing credentials. I've been coaching since I was 16. Uh -huh. I hit them up, man. Once they heard who I knew, like the places I can get to, and 757 is a big deal for the writing community. And they didn't have anyone. So uh -huh. they're like, we want you to take the 757. So ever since December, I've been doing it. And, uh, it's it's busy, it's hectic because seven five seven is not small, yeah, not and, you, <laughs> and you're trying to see all the kids before the season ends. Mm -hmm. But I, I've loved it. There's so many good kids around here. Yeah. So so what are your top kids in the area? Because I know we talked about that. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know you had a, like debate with the with the pilot seven five seven. I tried to debate the pilot. Pilot, if you want to debate, we can do that. <laughs> but um, my number one available right now is probably Jordan Battle. Yeah, that's everybody's though. That's everybody. You like, would think. You would think. <laughs> I talked. I talked to. I talked to a couple people that came on the show. And we talked about Jordan Battle, and it was like I always said, like if Jordan, I don't know what his family situation is, but I feel like, or his, I just feel like he's so loyal to NC. But I feel like if he would have left and did the same thing at a public school, and then be like, now what? Which I thought he could have. Oh but, yeah. <laughs> yeah for you sure. know what I'm saying? But yeah. uh, I thought if he would have went to prep public school and did the same thing, then it would have been no problem. I'm kind of mixed on that because, like, I came from TCIS, uh -huh. and we had dogs there. They still yeah. do. Cape Henry is nasty. Uh -huh. Stewart's got Efton Reed. Uh -huh. um, so he is playing people. I think what really screwed him was, um, and I told him I wish I knew him before this year, mm -hmm. he went with Boo. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. that's the Oak Hill kids there, uh -huh. all that. So he wasn't getting the burn he needed. Yeah. That summer, if he would have run with a push or a loaded, he would have put up numbers. And yeah, then yeah. he would have gotten the connects there. Or well, even the, uh, the Under Armour team, Steph, Steph's team. Yeah, they, yeah, were yeah. Doing, they was all over the mixtapes with AJ James, rest in peace, and uh, Kyrie Temple at the time. Especially yeah. at, uh, when they played at Boo. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I definitely feel like that situation hurts a lot of kids because Boo, you know, they're such an elite program. They've got the credentials is so high. 
the top top you if you ain't top tier <laughs> yeah. You ain't I mean you could play but I don't know if you're gonna get in well as it, much. Yeah, here's the thing too, right? Let's say I say from a scout perspective, you tell me, Oh, I played EYBL for boot. I'm like, oh for real? Uh -huh. How'd you do? Yeah. If you tell me, Oh, I ain't I didn't play, but I played on boot, yeah. well I'm like, Yeah, but you didn't play. Uh -huh. Like so you didn't actually do anything. Like it is I think kids usually think, Oh, this is a big name program if I'm in there you know, that's instant, like, prestige, but you got to do something. Yeah. If you don't get the chance to do something. And I actually, I do think battle was boo tier. Yeah. But, you know, those kids have been with the program for a while. I think that was his one year he ran with them. Mm -hmm. So it's like, he probably was not going to get the reps he needed. Especially, didn't Cam run with them, Cam Thomas? Yeah, well, yeah you ain't getting the ball first off. <laughs> so, yeah, Cam's a beast. So yeah. it's like, I would have stayed with... You know, one of the kids doing hoop groups like push, mm -hmm. loaded, and it'd be it'd be a lot of uh, coaches at those. I went I went with team loaded. I traveled with team loaded twice during the summertime, and I always show the coaches because people think it don't mean no coaches there. It'd be so many coaches there. Oh yeah, <laughs> not nah, coaches. Group. Coaches pay attention, man. But yeah. I I mean, something with like Jordan. The crazy thing I'm getting to now is I have coaches hit me up. First thing they say is, why doesn't he have offers? Why hasn't this played off for him? I'm like, well, bro, if you go by that, no one's going to offer him. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone's, I don't know why coaches are waiting for people to take their first. But where I'm from and how I learned the game, if you like someone, you take them. Yeah. You don't really care what he thinks. You don't care what the other guy thinks. But colleges are obsessed with that now. And it's, he's going to end up with nothing because everybody wants someone else to offer first. first. Yeah. I mean, I do know of um, mid to high major right now that's going to take them if their guard doesn't get waived. Mm -hmm. But it's like, it's still, man, like, I don't know why coaches play like that. Like, <laughs> if you like it, because everyone loves them. Yeah. I've never, I haven't heard one college say, oh, he's not good enough for us. If anything, I've heard a couple low majors say we think he's too good, mm. which is embarrassing. That's shameful because like, man, you do one, <laughs> you should be a dog. Like, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. You got, if you're a program like that, you should never say that. I would always think you want to build your program up. Yeah. If you have the chance to get them, take them. But, nah, man, he's he's probably, ever since, um, I had him and Chauncey around the same level mm -hmm. as far as, I think Jordan's better now as yeah. a product, but Chauncey's athleticism and lengths. That's crazy. He, you can't teach that. Right? <laughs> uh -huh. So, he, his to handle the rock, like, man. He, he's a video game, yeah, he's a video game. <laughs> but he, after he committed to Wichita State, I definitely think it's a battle right now. Mm. So, uh, who was else on your uh, 757 team list that you got? All right, so the reason for this list, I had never once thought about it, but when Prep Hoops dropped All State, I didn't really, I told them a few names I liked, but I didn't know they were making the list. Mm -hmm. um, they dropped the All State teams, and everybody in the 757 hit me up and said, Yo, why didn't this kid make the list? Why is this kid only honorable mention? Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about it, and I called, you know, one of the higher-ups in prep hoops. I said, look, man, 757 is good enough to have its own list. list. Yeah, I was like, it's literally talented enough to be its own thing. The issue 757 kids had was people on the state list are the Oak Hill kids, mm -hmm. the, you know, the prep schools. And yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of people hate that because they're like, they're not <laughs> really from around here. Those kids, a lot of those kids transfer here mm -hmm. from out of state. I got you. So... I was like, yo, let's go ahead and do a 757 list. And I ended up breaking it down by class. Yeah. Because especially with the corona stuff going on, mm -hmm. I, 2020 really needs to, uh, you know, get it shine. And when I make the list, some classes have different lengths. So, like, 2020 is 30 kids. Uh, 2021, I think, is 15 to 20. Mm -hmm. And then the underclassmen, it's less. Uh, it's just because... I want to make the list good to the point where it's not diluted, like not watered down. You know, I'm just Sorry, putting names to put names. You good. But so, yeah, so for first team for 2020, I had Battle. Uh, I ended up giving him 2020 MVP. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, w one of the things I look at for my MVP, obviously Pilot disagrees with me, <laughs> but uh, if I take you off your team, what's your team going to do? Yeah. You take him off NoCo, I, I don't know. I still like Tristan. Trisha Trisha, I love him. He's a great kid. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. but yeah, you're right. You, against Christian Moore without a battle? No. Like, they die. So, but, um, 
Justin Fogley, me and my first team. Uh, I don't know how Pilot put him on third team. That's crazy. But I mean, he <laughs> averaged 26, and the first argument made against someone like that is, well, look at his team. You know, he's putting up numbers, but is he running with the like an elite team? Yeah. What I say is, yo, he's getting double and triple teamed. Yeah. And he's still averaging 26. Yeah, and he's got there twice, two years in a row. He got to the what region? Tournament, tournament? Yeah, and I'm like, man, you average 26, and I walk in the gym, everyone walks in the gym, we know you're getting the rock, uh -huh. we're game planning just for you, yeah. and he's still eating, like that, and it's against good team, Kings 4, yeah. he played well uh, two or three times against them, and so he's not playing bones either, so the fact he put up 26, I think he actually will be pretty good in college too, he has a good body, 6'3", um, lanky. Um, he, he, has he committed yet? No, I know a couple. Seven five seven is crazy, man. Like the first off, this transfer portal. Yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> it's like a new hundred every day. I, like it's very hard for these kids to get offered. And do you think it's because of the virus and everything stopped, like messed everything up, kind of this year? Yeah, I think what ultimately it comes down to is kids from colleges are looking at it like, yo. Coronavirus is going to give us a lot of leeway to move around. Mm -hmm. So they jump in the portal. They're like, you know, if we move right now, they're going to waive that one year that we would have to sit. They're taking advantage of the system. Uh, yeah, are they yeah. done for it? No. Is it bad? Like, not for them. I understand why some kids are doing it. They want to play somewhere else. But for 2020 is now, it's cutthroat, man. Like, Because a lot of colleges, when I talk to them, they look at it like, yo, this kid... Yeah, he's coming from a D2, D3, but he put up numbers. We know what he does in college. Yeah. So they want the seasoned veterans. and Rather than the kid coming from high school. Yeah, which I disagree with. Um, especially, like, when I look at Jordan Battle, he's he's got the college body right now. He's mm -hmm. a very strong point guard. A um, couple of these D1s have hit me up. They said, hey, to be honest, we're tired of kids coming here, putting up numbers, and leaving. And my response is, well, you know, you get a graduate transfer come in, he's only there for a year. Mm -hmm. Jordan's going to put up better numbers for a year, even if he leaves, it's better production than that grad transfer. So, you know, some of the logic kind of escapes me. But, yeah, man, the transfer portal is wild. What's some crazy names you've seen out there so far? <laughs> uh, transfer portal? Yeah. Uh, that you didn't expect. I didn't expect so many people to leave from Bradford. It was like two or three. Oh, dude, I was pissed because I hit the coach up. I'm like, hey, man, it looks like y'all got slots for these 757 kids. He's like, nah, we knew. Apparently, these coaches knew that if there was an opportunity, um, players would leave. Like that one guard, apparently he was putting up monster numbers. So they knew he was going. Um, i seen a couple names I used to hoop with. I didn't know. They were still, they were still in college. <laughs> I thought that was a long time ago. but I remember I seen Clever, uh Green that I used to play with, WCA. Uh, he, he left, he's leaving Radford as well. Yeah, the um, Bash Towns is a grad transfer. Yeah, he's leaving. And that kid, I swear that kid already <laughs> in like middle school is like 6'5", 250. Like, yeah. Kid was always big, but not me in the transfer portal with the virus. I, I do think, and I think it's a mistake by college to um, offer these waivers or even consider it. Because mm -hmm. you, if you look at a kid and say, okay, you can transfer one time no penalties all these not only will these kids be willing to jump ship with no penalty you're gonna have a lot of coaches interfering with other programs mm -hmm. you might have a calipari pulling up somewhere else and saying hey kid come to kentucky you know yeah, we'll yeah. take you so a lot of programs will suffer from it you know i, I i've always been big on sticking with your team yeah um, i think loyalty is a big deal i think if you have the talent you'll get noticed like like I said, when I played McAdoo, stayed at Christian. Mm -hmm. Dodo stayed at uh, Norcom. Norcom, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like everyone stayed because if you were good enough, we would know. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. I think Jay Knapp should stay at Kings Fort. Yeah, he's our yeah, pilot. Wrote, he's going to the NBA. <laughs> man. He's, he's gonna get offers. <laughs> I think I think it, it's a win-win situation for him because King Fort, Kings Fort was good last year. Um, but this year, I mean, he, I feel like he separated himself so far from the pet. Like, it should, he's a sophomore. I mixed up, I love He's it. a sophomore, and he's arguably the best player in the 7 5 7. 
right now. He's a soft. I mean, we can we can argue that right now. <laughs> I mean, there's some. You don't think so? No. What I'm worried about, and um, it's funny too with Jaden Epps. I'm really close to someone that's been a trainer for a while, Daryl Toe. He's a great guy. Uh, runs a program uh, a little up north. Um, I've that's Jaden Epps is the first player I ever covered for prep hoops. Mm. I just happened. I was at the Kensville tournament. Just happened to be there. I didn't know Jaden. I didn't know who he was. Because I had been out of the scene for a while. But um, I'm worried with a kid like that. They're already riding, oh, he's going to the NBA. He's not going to improve as much. Because he, I, I don't know where his mentality is at. But if you hear you're already that guy and you're putting up numbers, how pressed are you to get better? You know? I mean, it just. I feel like it just depends on the mentality. To be honest, because I mean... Cam was that dude. I seen him freshman year. Cam six four. <laughs> but yeah, you right. Yeah, Cam six four. He was putting up numbers. <laughs> Took a year off and then went to Oak Hill. And still Cam six guy. four though. Cam like that's the thing. You know when you when you call like all seriousness, you call a kid an NBA prospect already. I wouldn't be doing all of that. But no, I think that's risky, man. You never know what happens. And like like Especially I said, with social media now. Yeah, JNM's like six one. Mm -hmm. um, not a lot of guards are under 6'2 these days, um, especially in the pros. I mean, I remember playing with Devin Hall mm -hmm. uh, when he was around. He's a 6'6 six, six point guard. Yeah. And even then, we were like, I don't know if he's going pro. And he was definitely a beast. Uh -huh. uh, ESPN top 100, everything. But I think when we give those labels, man, it can be risky. I think what could also be dangerous is a lot of kids and a lot of crowds will be trying him mm -hmm. for the rest of his high school career. That's what and I've, I've seen him, I understand why he's getting upset. We gotta remember he's still a kid. Yeah. But I've seen him get upset by it and when, when oh my god, so, some of these crowds, man, they see it gets to you, yeah. oh, it's over, bro. <laughs> they're, like, I remember Norview crowd, when mm -hmm. they saw they were getting on his nerves, they're dogs. Like, they just got after him. They had to stop the game, like, three times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was there. I yeah, was yeah, there. man. That was crazy. <laughs> I, I knew it was coming, too. As soon as he reacted, I knew, you know, that's what you do. That's what a crowd does. Um, I think that might be a benefit of if he transferred somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, he'd be playing with kids on his level. But then again, King Sports had a talented team. And Beal yeah. Jr., their sophomore, he's he's a monster. Yeah. Um, I've gotten word they might be getting a kid transferring there. I ain't going to say who, but uh -huh. <laughs> you'll remember here if they say who. But, um, nah, Jayden, I don't think he's the best player this year in the 757. Jordan Battle is. Yeah, Jordan Battle is, bro. Jordan. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not mad at that. Yeah, I'm not mad at that. I mean, I saw Jordan 50 piece someone. <laughs> like, I don't I care who you playing. I, I, I was at a game and he seen me and I was like, hey, I'm, I'm at your game, man. I, I don't want no BS. I was like, can I get 40? He gave me 44. I was happy. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, but he's legit. Man, he's already got the build. Like, yeah. this is how good Jordan Battle is. So, like, in case people think he's just putting up empty numbers, when they played Stewart, Afton Reed's the number 14 player in the country in his class, five star prospect. Jordan was going at him, and the way Jordan finishes, he can finish through contact. Like, one of the best contact finishers I've seen in a while. Mm -hmm. And after the game, I was talking to Jordan and Afton. And I think it was Efton's, either his mom or his grandma came up and asked Jordan why he wasn't on the Olympic team with Efton. <laughs> she was like, weren't you on the Olympic team? He's like, no, man. And she was like, you should be. So that's the kind of dog he is. Yeah. Um, I just think when physically when you have those tools, um, I'd like to see Jaden get a little quicker. Um, I think at that size, quickness at the guard, I think he'd be close to unstoppable. Mm -hmm. um, but I've also seen him where you at the Indian River game with King Sport. No, the one they lost. Khalil Odin got up in them, man. But those, those smaller, quick yeah, guards, yeah, they get up in them. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that comes with maturity. That's why it's very rare, man. You'll see a sophomore where I can clearly say they're the best. They're the best. Yeah, because it's just like Jamal Madison, Norview, absolute dog. He was up in them. He one of my favorite players, man. Yeah, yeah, he got he up in them. He just both. I love. I just love a kid that play both ends of the court, man. Yeah, yeah, it's nothing yeah. like it, man. You don't see that no more. You just see the kid that wants the highlight tapes, that want to do crazy stuff, want to talk to the crowd. But a kid that can defend and get in your ass, that's that's like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Jamal Madison is a monster. That's that's the best, man. Yeah, that's he, a good kid. All he does is bug you for yes. for the whole game. Man. Yes, like, but he gave him fits. Khalil Odin, the scrappy point guard, seemed to give him 
uh, fits. And I think that just comes with maturity, yeah. knowing how to handle that, developing a game around that, uh -huh. getting the separation. And like, if, if we're going to be honest, the man had the greenest light I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> He could shoot a full court shot to do that. It's all right. Get back on D. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, so he had a really green light. So uh -huh. and the way Battle plays, um, yes, he's allowed to shoot, but he also takes pretty smart shots. He didn't take really bad yeah. shots or anything, or he's not launching them. But I think another kid in that class, that sophomore class, is loaded for the seven five seven. Yes, um, King and Giles. If he grows, <laughs> oh my god. He I don't mean, miss. <laughs> I remember uh, watching him at the uh, the tournament that was at Kentville. I was like, yo, this kid don't miss. And then, you know, last year, I uh, actually took uh, took my camera and recorded, like, the whole kind of season and was, like, at their practices and mm -hmm. stuff. And it was just, like, seeing what he was doing. I was like, bro, no, like, he's going to be good, man. I was so mad, man. First <laughs> time I saw him, it was because of the hair. I put him at six foot. Um, and then when I stood next to him, I'm like, oh, man, he's not six foot, bro. He's like five nine, five ten. But if that kid grows, mm -hmm. he's he's a serious problem if he grows. Even now, he's putting up numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I still think he could have a college career right now. But I, if he grows, I think he could over. He definitely gonna have to play the one. But I feel like apparently he does in AAU. Apparently he runs the point and he does it very well. He's really? a great defender too. Probably one of the more underrated uh -huh. defenders. Um, Donald Ham Jr. With that size, shooter, he he's about lighting it up. He might be about six five right now. Yeah, and so tall. every time I see him, he like come to other people games. I'm like, bro, I didn't know you was that tall. Like just walking. Like, yeah, like I first I'm time I met him. Up to him like, yeah, first time I met him, I'm six three, and I was standing next to him. I was like, Donald, how tall are you? And he goes, Oh, I'm about six three. I was like, hey, I'm six three. You're like six five. <laughs> like, but with that size, and he's a kid that plays the game right. Mm -hmm. He doesn't do anything flashy. He's not going to know, not really get the crowd hype, but he's going to kill you. Look up. For yeah. sure. You're going to look up <laughs> at the end. 25, yeah. 30, yeah. Yeah, he snapped for, uh, he finished with 31. He snapped for 26 in the second half against Smith in the playoffs. Killed him, like seven yeah. threes. And I don't know what it is, but Oscar Smith can't get past last time. And I thought they had that. <laughs> I thought, I didn't think Donald Ham and Caleb Peterson by themselves, along with their little crew that they got. That they was going to be Oscar Smith. Not this year. Wait, but did, were you there? No, no. Okay, so here's what happened. <laughs> One of the worst coaching decisions I've seen in my life. So, Tory Jordan, he, he actually made my third team. Uh -huh. One of the better on-ball defenders yes, sir. in 757. Real scrappy. He, uh, he's still available coaching. But, um, he got up and Donald Hand held him to five in the first half. Wasn't blocking a shot or anything, but you know he he plays like a Bruce Bowen type defense. You know, mm -hmm. just bugs you. Donald only had five first half. They Second went to half, zone, right? Like they that. went to a zone, <laughs> a two three zone. And he had seven threes, right? All they did was screen the top. He would flash up, catch the ball, drain it, catch it and shoot. And I, I seen the highlights, and I was like, I was like, oh my god, bro, switch back. <laughs> Apparently, the Lansdown coach has done it to him multiple times, like. I seen mine, it, man. Mine axed him or something. I don't know. I I've seen it, man. I'm like, yo, what is going on? It, easy fix. Just put Tory back on him. Uh -huh. Tory wasn't in foul trouble or anything, but they switched the zone and they died. So, <laughs> I mean, maybe he thought Donald was having a bad game, but it was actually Tory's defense was really good. Mm -hmm. um, what do you see, think about Bottoms? I feel like Bottoms plays the right way as well as a good point guard. As a, he's um, – he's – in my top five uh, best players right now, unsigned. He, uh, there's a couple things he does in high school that I think people mistake for bad play. For example, uh, he throws a lot of really high tier uh, drop off passes and things like that when he gets in the lane. Players he's playing with right now can't convert that. They mm -hmm. can't catch that necessarily. He's not bad at it. He's actually too good right now. Mm -hmm. Which the good thing for that is when he gets in college, these kids are more experienced, they're better, they'll be able to catch some of those passes. You know, that's a little mixed thing like, oh, he should be know who he's passing to. Uh -huh. But a lot of times I honestly think it's instinctive, like, you know, just make the right play. And then he, you know, it's a turnover because the kid can't catch it. But in college that translates good size too. He's about 6'2". Mm -hmm. uh, in basketball height. Everyone knows basketball height. He had an inch. So he about 6'2". Um, now what about the uh, teammate, Chavis? The dunker. He can fly. Yeah. Um, one thing, I think hurt his recruiting, even though he got a bunch of offers. He got hurt at the beginning of the season. It's not just that, man. When I saw him play, 
I, I talked to him after the game. I said, look, man, the way you play in the game, and I understand your coach puts you in certain spots. He, he was posting up a lot and stuff. He looked like an athlete playing basketball. Yeah. He didn't look like an athletic basketball player. I said, you got to show, man. All you got to do is take two dribbles. You're at the rack. Like, with your size, athleticism, um, face up. Against India River, he showed that. Yeah. Um, got an offer right after. So, I mean, I wasn't lying to him. But I was like, <laughs> you, you're 6'6", man. You got to show... He could do a little more things on the break. But athletically, I think he's a D1 athlete. Mm -hmm. uh, his game has to mature, and I think uh, some of that's confidence too. Um, mm -hmm. But, I mean, next level, he's going to finish. He's going to rebound. He's a really good defender. Yeah. He's one of those kids, man, he, swat, he swats your shot once, you're not coming back. <laughs> you're going to pull up the rest of the game. So Yeah, I felt like that was the same when uh, I had the Wilson team there, and Coach Andrews was saying that uh, Kyle Davis – Mm -hmm. The uh, year before, prior, he was playing a lot of his back to the basket, mm -hmm. posting up. And then this year, he actually put him on the wing. And, I mean, he takes that two dribbles, and you know he's going up, like, flying. Yeah, and you I don't have like, to take I feel like it helped him a lot, you know, especially with his It's a confidence thing, man. You tell that kid, okay, you're you're allowed to play basketball. Pulling threes a little bit, too. Man. Yeah, I don't know if I'd have changes pull three. I don't know if he could <laughs> shoot, but... I see him in practice. He can shoot. He just don't. I think I think a lot of high school players hurt, um, or high school coaches hurt these players by only thinking of themselves. Um, they kind of box kids in. Like I said, when I was in high school, uh, my first season I played for Mark Hall, one of the best coaches I've ever been around. He's at Cape now. Cape. He left. I just couldn't afford to go to Cape. Mm -hmm. um, I wish I had found a way, but you know he want, he wanted to make me a guard. He wanted me to play guard because he knew I wasn't going to grow. Um, but you know, my other high school coach wanted me in the post. I'm like, yeah, I'm six three, man. That doesn't translate. I mean, you see that bigger than everybody else. You should, you should. If you're a good coach, man, you should be able to adapt your system to the player you have. You take a Chavis, you tell him, okay, we're gonna put you on the wing. You're gonna learn how to play the whole game. You're a basketball player. You, sh you tell me you can't win with a Carl Chavis that can hit threes and dribble too. That's a that's a great problem to have. Like, yeah. So you would like to – it's not just Chavis. It's a lot of situations. You'd like to see high school coaches think a little more about the future for their players. Mm -hmm. I understand you got to win games, but if you're good enough, you could still win with, you know, the players you're working on. Yeah. Uh, another another couple kids, Tristan Howe, uh, mm -hmm. he's still growing. I, yeah, I swear I like, he's still growing. I've seen him play with push, I want to say, the previous year. And, I mean, uh, a lot of the push kids, you know, it's all star team. All-star team, he wasn't getting the ball a lot, but, mm -hmm. you know, he played his game. But then I went to the game, and I was like, who's this kid? I seen him before. And I'm like, yo, it's a kid from Push. And I was like, man, his game, I don't know what he did, been doing. He's been in the gym or something, but his game developed a whole lot. Yeah, man, he's what he just turned 17. Yeah, yeah I heard, I heard he could, like, get another year and everything, something like that, right? Yeah, but he's, he's a very high academic kid, has a 3-8 at Norfolk Collegiate, which is very impressive. High SAT score. Um, he's he's one of those man. He's about six seven. I think he could finish around six eight six nine. Because when I met him in December to when I saw him last week, he's legitimately gotten taller. Mm. Um, perfect length. Yeah, he could put weight on. That's a lot of kids. Uh -huh. I think. But once Tristan Howe puts on fifteen pounds, <laughs> oh my god, it's a wrap. Like he's a he will be a monster. And he, he's a smart player. Uh -huh. um, really good mid range. Uh, yeah. Can dribble a little bit, you know. He's not going to dance, but he can bring the ball up, plays defense. Like he's, I think, you know, if I had to attach a label, I think low major to, uh, could walk on to a really good D one if he wanted. Mm -hmm. um, low major, easily D two. Um, he's a good one. Madison and Hines, both from uh -huh. Norview. Yep, I like I, John Hines. John Hines, man, he he showed a lot this year, stepping up to play in the post. Like he was like they glue because he did a little bit of everything. Yeah, man, he's 6'3", he's rebounding, getting blocks, uh -huh. covers the floor. Well, I remember first time I saw him versus Kings Fort, first half, I'm like, man, this is a pretty good undersized big man. Like, I thought he was just a big man. No. <laughs> <laughs> he comes out, jab step off the dribble, pulling up. I'm like, oh, he's a guard. Yeah, like, yeah, he actually yeah. has guard skills. Um, he has a really good body, too, for a guard. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's a, he'd be a really good wing player um, in college. Jamal Madison, you can't teach his toughness. Um, that's that's straight Norfolk, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's straight Norfolk bread right there. Yeah, he'll play you the whole court all the way down. Nothing easy. 
really good passer. I've rarely seen him turn the ball over. Yeah. If he turns it over, he gets back on defense mm-hmm. immediately. Um, really good passer, solid shooter, can get in the lane. He's he's he might have been the best pure point guard in seven five seven this season. Purest. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I mean, if, <laughs> if a, you guys just so me. many point guards that I don't know, I like I like a lot of the point guards in the um in this class because they play the game right. I feel like they not a lot of them don't have like the score, like don't have to score on their team. A lot of the point guards now, like him, Tim Montgomery, mm-hmm. uh, he plays the game. I right. wish I I wish I had <laughs> seen him more. Yeah, uh, he I plays the game right. I mean, it's just it's just. But I mean, like, even Bottoms, but, but Bottoms played on a loaded team, so his yeah. stats are deceiving. I know. Um, I mean, but Madison, I think if if you were to say just for now, like, who do you want to run the floor, it's probably Madison. Um, guaranteed two-way point guard, mm-hmm. great passer. Uh, Bottoms is up there. Khalil Odin had a great season. Yeah. Um, he's a dog. He's just so so short, man. But I, uh, I seen him in – I seen him in eighth grade. I – this is when uh, Coach Clay had uh, Chesapeake Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> Chesapeake Thunder. <laughs> Kyle Odin was killing him and Carl Chavis, dog, dogging everybody. And I was yeah. like, bro, these kids are gonna be good. Now that they man. graduated, it's like, dang, that's crazy. Like Khalil, <laughs> Khalil though, um, I think actually for me more, he needs to put a little weight on. Mm-hmm. I think he he can get thrown around a lot. But if you want to talk about a kid that just just knows how to get a bucket, yeah. the the good thing about guards his size is they're they've most likely been that size their whole life, uh-huh. so they know how to get their shots. Okay. I remember before my first time I seen him play was against Smith. I, I was like, "Yo, drop fifty tonight because I'm gonna be there." He had twenty four and a half, <laughs> and then he got hurt. Yeah, 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 but I mean, he was scoring on Tory Jordan and Andre Bottoms two pretty good def- perimeter defenders. I think he always goes at them because you know he's supposed to be at Smith as well. Well, he could have went to Smith. For real? Yeah, he, I believe that's he got crazy. cut or something like that. And that's why he went to Rimba. You see, I don't know the politics when I hear that. <laughs> like I said, I was off the scene for a few years. Yeah, so yeah. These kids are new to me, but not Khalil's. His brother's a gunslinger too. Mm-hmm. Uh, his just, his little brother gets money too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they, I mean... It depends on what, like, if especially for a D three man, Khalil Odin easily could play D three, mm-hmm. even with his size. Like he he can make shots. He's a good passer and he plays defense. Yeah. I only saw Andre Bottoms get cleanly ripped once this season. I saw him <laughs> play like seven times. And it was Khalil. I, I, I keep seeing it on social media. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. People keep reposting it. A little it. pop out. Yeah, no, it's funny, but I mean, it is impressive, and he. He outplayed Jaden Epps mm-hmm. legitimately. I think Jaden had 16. Most of those were free throws. Khalil had 32. Yeah. And he got up in him, guard you. That's a, that's another thing with Jaden, man. Like, I've noticed the guards that aren't afraid to go at him do really well. Yeah. I think a lot of that is uh, he intimidates a lot of players. Mm-hmm. One, he's coming in with like you know all the notoriety given by the paper and other like word of mouth. Two, um, he is a dangerous player. Like his range is crazy. But if you get up in him, because you know he's pulling that first three. Yeah, I seen him four games in a row pulling that first three <laughs> from deep, and everybody in the crowd is woo. Yeah, yeah, like I mean, like I said, I think if Kenyon grows, he's definitely a challenger mm-hmm. as top guard. I heard Kanye Clare. I've only seen him a little bit. I heard he's tough. Yeah. Oh yeah, Ty Water Snubbed. team. Yeah, yeah that, <laughs> that's gross. But I mean, they put fatherly on the third team. Yeah. Twenty six points a game. That's that's tough. Like they, I don't know, man. That's a lot of those selections. I, I understand picking Jaden Epps as Player of the Year in seven five seven. I I go back and forth with this with Jack, one another prep hoops writer. He had a great season. Like don't get me wrong. It's just if you take them off that Kings Fork team, how much worse do they really do? You know that's a really good team they had. That was a that was a deep team. They had Beal Jr. Quentin Livingston, mm-hmm. uh, that 6'8 sophomore. I don't believe he's a sophomore. <laughs> I was talking to him the other day. I was like, bro, you're not a sophomore. Apparently, he plays receiver, too. That's crazy, 6'8 mm-hmm. receiver, but he's a big kid. Uh, Tyler Chapman was really good for them. Uh, Heights, a freshman, yeah. uh, and he hits. Like, that's a deep team, man. You take Jaden off, do they have the same record? I don't know, but that team could easily adapt mm-hmm. and easily just fill in for him. 
Yeah, I thought they were, I thought they were a pretty good team, man. I mean, they they were legitimately in the running for best team in Virginia for a while. Yeah. Everyone thought they were the best team. Um, so, I mean, it's not just Jaden there. Um, and he really does have the greenest light. I promise <laughs> you. Go watch any mixtape. He's got the greenest light. That's he what everybody said. That's what yeah, but he, he got the green. I think, you know, Donald Hand Jr. with his size um, is a more intriguing prospect to me. Even if he stops growing right now, he's about six five shooting guard, yeah. perfect size, um, and he's only going to get better. But right now, he's a really mature player. I was sitting with a college coach um, at one of his games, and we were scouting a couple of the seniors. And he goes, "Well, where's that kid committed to?" I was like, "He's a sophomore." <laughs> he's like, "Oh, I was about to offer him." <laughs> he's like, "We could use that next season." But nah, he he's really good, man. He's I want to see Kanye a little more because I heard he he's also very good. Yeah, he, he and he plays both both ends of the court as well. Uh, and, and he doesn't have the team like a lot of the other guards do. Yeah, so, it was him and Zay, I think. Uh huh. Um, so you know he's working with that. But there's another sophomore no one talks about. Uh, his name's Kendon Peebles. Uh, goes to Hampton Christian. He's about six four. I think he's still growing. Mm -hmm. Super long, um, athletic. He's a defender. He's one of those kids, if he polishes his game, he's going to be a nightmare in this area for the next two years. Because he's probably not staying at Hampton Christian, which means he's coming around one of these places. <laughs> he's the type of player, man, if he had been on Cape this year, that would have been scary as like for that right. third yeah, wing. I haven't got the chance. To... Uh, remember that name, man. You heard it. He got hurt last year. <laughs> okay. So um, he sat out most of the year, but came back and went to his size, perfect size at the two or the three especially in high school, and he's athletic. He averaged like 24, 5, 7, 3 steals, 2 mm -hmm. blocks. He, he's similar to like a Quentin Livingston. Okay. And I, I'm pretty high on Quentin Livingston. I think he's a very good junior prospect. I felt like he was average, and then during the playoffs, he definitely played a higher level of basketball because he was like the more dominant figure in the playoffs to me, seeing. Yeah, everybody was so worried about Jaden and – he was actually killing everybody. He was getting all the rebounds, yeah, getting all yeah. the putbacks. I mean, he put up numbers, man. It's, it's like, I guess I look at it different. So with prep hoops, the reason I love working for prep hoops, when I go to a game, you'll see a lot of um, like the Balls Life type people. They're looking for the McDonald's All-American types. Yeah. I'm, I'm watching the game. I say, okay, this kid, there's one or two kids here can play D1. But this, two of them can play D2, four of them can play D3. That's what I'm looking at because uh -huh. we work for all the colleges. Yeah. So I see the game a little different. When I see Quentin Livingston, I don't care what his numbers are. I see a kid yeah. that plays defense, 6'5", yeah. super long, rebounds, can shoot. It's funny, I did ask him if he could shoot, and then he hit the game winner. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess he could big, shoot. That's a big shot, boy. <laughs> Bro, that's one of the biggest shots he's going to probably take in his basketball career. Nah, that, I do like that from Jaden. Yeah. Um, Jaden made that pass. It was a smart play. Uh -huh. um, but, you know, I, I, everyone always says, like, why you hate on Jaden? I don't hate on Jaden. I, <laughs> I think uh, I'm not so quick to crown someone uh -huh. when there's a lot of kids in the 757 that's going to press them the next couple of years. Yeah, yeah. I even think what his teammate now, uh, Beal Jr., uh -huh. he, he's a good player too. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he's probably still growing. Uh, another kid I'll talk about him later um, that made my underclassmen team, Caleb Brown. From NSA, yeah, yeah, he's a freshman. He was he was averaging about twenty a game. Mm. Went at it with Jordan Battle. You, you, it, it it's not every <laughs> not everybody goes at it with Jordan Battle, uh -huh. right? So I mean, he's good. Um, another yeah, Caleb Caleb's good. I haven't got to see him play a lot um, unless they play like Bishop or or Kate. He's got perfect size already for the two guard. He's about six three. Um, if he rounds out his game more, he's got three more years. Yeah. He's and he was playing NSA as what in middle school, right? Too as Ave Brady was. I he think so. Year, like I think so. Yes, yeah. they had, they had a pretty good. They were an interesting team, guard heavy. Um, they had two players make my all seven by seventeen. No, three. Three. Yeah, they were actually pretty good. So I guess I'll go through the rest of them. We had um, Zay. From Princess Anne, I thought he put up great numbers. Um, yeah. Really strong big man. I heard he don't want to play football. I heard he wants to play. That's football. crazy because that kid's huge. But. <laughs> and I know he got like crazy offers for uh, football, but he said. He but you know what, basketball. man? It's it's funny how that works. When I played, I don't know if you'd remember him. There's this kid, George Wahi. Um, George Wahi, where you go? Norfolk Christian. He had an older brother that played for UVA. Um, 
Will Wadi played football, but George was very good at football. He was also good at basketball, but everyone wanted him for football. There's certain kids, man, are naturally better at stuff, but they love something else. Like, yeah. Tory Jordan is a legitimate D1 soccer prospect, uh -huh. but he loves, he loves basketball. basketball yeah. yeah, so every coach I talk to him about them, they say, oh, we're not recruiting him. I'm like, why? They say, oh, he's playing soccer. I'm like, yeah, but he loves basketball. Uh -huh. yeah, sometimes it just works like that. But um, Zyrell was another kid from Lake Zyrell Taylor. Zyrell too, yeah. They just had a – I don't think they had the best season, but, yeah, Zyrell's a bucket. I, I seen him last year, he averaged 30 points. I heard he was a monster <laughs> last year. I first saw him at, uh, I think, King, either Churchland or it was one of the classics. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. he went against Fats from Verena. Uh, I would say that school name wrong. I don't know what the school's <laughs> name. But, yeah, I know you're talking uh, about. They got a big three there that are only sophomores. But he Fats is going to be one of the best players in Virginia at that sophomore class outside mm -hmm. of the 757, like 6'6 six, six already. Mm -hmm. um, got a basketball name and it's like Alfonso <laughs> Phillips. Like, that's a perfect basketball name, but he's going to be really good and they both dropped 30 on each other. Mm. Zyrell's a dog. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Really good size. Um, only thing, the first thing I ask players and I want the younger players I'm trying to instill this in them, I ask them what their grades are. Yeah. Because if you ain't got the grades, man, you can't get the offers. Uh-huh. Um, that's, that's that's a fact. That's That was always the biggest thing Like when I played at Tallwood. Like grade grades came first. Like even like when that Coach Carter movie came out, <laughs> and the grade we all actually different. different. Yeah. Yes, I mean, I, all of my coach was like he was serious about that, man. Like he was really serious about. And, and you gotta be honest with yourself, man. How many of us are going to the league? I know. How many? Like, yeah, there's overseas options, but even even then, there's not many players that'll do that. Uh huh. And so you got to focus on the classroom. That's why I love a Tristan Howe type player. Yeah, Three point yeah. eight at a very hard school. He's gonna come in and do his work. You got. I don't know what Zyrell's grades are, mm -hmm. um, but you know some of these kids just aren't getting offers because they ain't got the grades. Yeah. Especially, and it's sad but true at a public school. If you're barely making that two point oh, college is like no. And when you're coming from like a TCIF school because uh -huh. of their academic standards. They, I've had college admissions people tell me they'll look at a 2.0 at like Catholic High as like a 2.4, 2.5 because mm -hmm. it's that much harder. So you really have to, all you got to do is show, show up show and Show up and turn <laughs> everything in. <laughs> yeah, that's all you got to do. <laughs> but it makes my life so much easier as a scout because, you know, I might really want to write up on you. But then again, the, my clients, which are colleges, can't take you. Yeah. So it's like, I... I can't make you do the work. Co coaches, you, you got to do it yourself. If you love basketball, you better love the classroom, like mm -hmm. bottom line. Um, so, yeah, that's that's one of those things for a lot of these recruits. Uh, Ray Bellamy, Lakeland. Yeah, he's, he's one of my favorite. Perfect <laughs> point guard build, man. He's, he's, like, he's one of my favorites. I didn't know about him at all. When I watched uh, Clay and Team Push last year, I was like, yo, that kid, is he's tough. He's, he's, he's the one. He, I, I do know he's probably going to prep, and the prep he's talking to is going to play a national schedule next year. Yeah. Th that kid's at least 6'4 at the point guard position. He doesn't dance with it, but you're not going to rip him. He's going by. I say he's like a poor man's John Wall, how John Wall played in high school. Uh -huh. Obviously, he's not John Wall. Level, don't get <laughs> but the way he's a long point guard, yeah. super bouncy. Uh, arms long. Yes. <laughs> man, he was guarding. He, I was at the Hopewell game. Mm -hmm. And he uh, he had to guard Edmonds, who already has D1 offers. And yeah. he, he blocked him like three straight times. He just gets it, runs out, slams on him, catches lobs at the point guard spot. Yeah. He's got so much potential. Like yeah. Chauncey Jenkins level of potential, especially because mm -hmm. he's at the point guard spot. Yeah. Um, so he made my first team. That basically rounds out first team. Second team, this is how you know I'm not biased because <laughs> Pilot was biased, man. Don't let them fool you. They were definitely biased. I heard he went to church with some of those players' families. <laughs> So, yeah, if we're being honest. but <laughs> Some of my favorite kids in the 7-5, man, I didn't even put them on first team. Andre Bottoms, uh, mm -hmm. one of the first players I started talking to. Loved the kid. He made my second team. He he and a lot of other players are victim of having a talented team. Yeah. That Smith team was loaded. Uh -huh. um, and it's been loaded since he's been there. And, yeah. And that's that's what hurt him. And he had Cam, he, didn't he? I heard yes, he had Cam. Yeah, he had TJ. Um, I forget TJ Lane, but he was the lefty dunker. Mm -hmm. Uh, Wayne, um, 
He had Nazir Chambers. I mean, yeah, really. he got Tory. He has so many other players that's good. He still, even on top of that, he did have a good season. Yeah. Um, as their floor general, um, he had one of his best games was Enrico. I was there for that one. He he really showed, man. Um, he can sh- he shoots it better than people think. Uh-huh. He has really quick feet, which is very underrated for a guard. So when he gets in the lane, he's very quick in and out. Mm-hmm. Has a perfect mid range game. Uh, can finish at the rim. Uh, he's a very good prospect to me. He made my second team. Um, Terry White from Grafton. Um, oh, yeah. Not a lot of kids know about him, man, but he he averaged 20, like 6-6. Six and six, Led his team in every category. Team constantly faced uh, injuries, gym burn down, mm-hmm. like anything Dang. bad that could happen to you. It was like a movie, like anything bad that could happen to you. I didn't know that. But he still put up numbers, still was a leader, mm-hmm. uh, about 6'2". He, he's a very good player, works hard. Um, when I saw him, he put up numbers against FC, and he had, like, plantar fasciitis or something. Mm. And he's you wouldn't have known. And he doesn't complain, nothing like that. Like, he's he's a tough point guard. Mm. Um, you got to love a kid like that, and especially with the numbers you know, you can justify it. Yeah. Chavis, he would have been first team if he didn't get hurt. Yeah. But he got hurt, so, you know, I got to be fair. Um, Chavis is definitely a first-team talent. Uh, like we said before, long. I believe he was first team last year. I want to say. I'm not sure though. Don't was it for a tie water or something? Probably. Yeah. First of all, I don't get these regions. I don't. Get, <laughs> <laughs> there are so many regions, man. When they're yeah. like, yo, they, he they, made, they messed it up, man. Like he made 68 region. I'm like, what is that? I don't know what that is. <laughs> that wasn't even around when I was in high school. No, 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 yeah. So I it, think I first just kind of changed. Like I want to say, kind of after Dodo or right before Dodo or while Dodo was playing. Okay. That error, that's when it changed everything. Yeah, I mean, I'm old school, man. I think you should be able to beat the person on your block. Mm-hmm. You know, you should be playing the kids. You shouldn't have to go all the way up state to play the best. You should, whoever's the best to come out of here should go to states. Mm-hmm. See, like right now, it's like a, every team, every class we have around here, a Norfolk team could win. Yeah. A Norfolk school could win. Yeah, so, they could run the table. Yeah, so 3A, Booker T could go to states. 4A, uh, I don't know who's in 4A. Uh, Lake Taylor's in 4A. 5A, um, it could be Norview. Norview. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah. But, it's, but it's crazy. Like That's that's wild. Here's what I was looking at. I was so mad when I found this out. I'm like, bro, playoff basketball, we're about to get this Norview Kings Fort game. <laughs> and they're like, nope. <laughs> I was like, that's the best game in the 757, though. It's like you can't ask for much better. Mm-hmm. Oscar Smith did have the talent to beat anyone, but they weren't consistent. Yeah. Norview was consistent. Green Run was consistent. Um, they had a few players make my team. It, like I want to see the best play each other in our yeah, area, yeah. and then they truly come out to me as winners. But it is what it mm-hmm. is. But Marcus Banks Jr. Bethel, um, uh-huh. yeah. he did a lot for that team. Fair, I, I've been checking them out. Yeah, Banks Banks is good size for a guard, about 6'4". Mm-hmm. He's solidly built. He can shoot. He had to do a lot of things this year because of the team, like yeah, just yeah. the team makeup. And he showed he could, so I think, you know, he's a legitimate prospect. Probably going to prep uh, from what I'm hearing, but he, he had a great year. Um, Gilbert Brown, one of my favorite players to watch from Minchville. Uh, uh-huh. He's okay. in the running when I give out actual awards. Um, he's in the running for Defensive Player of the Year. Mm-hmm. He's like... Jamal Madison on crack on defense. Like <laughs> he gets up in you. He loves defense. Uh, I like you said you like it. I love a kid that'll mm-hmm. play both sides. Yeah. And he's about six one, really athletic, really quick. Uh, I think he's a D one defender. Mm-hmm. I, he's got to round his game out. And, but you know he also played on Mitchell with Chauncey and Allen. Yeah. So you know he's running with legitimate guards. Um, but he plays great defense. That's why I had to put him second team. Um, AJ Walters, Great Bridge kid that fell under the radar because uh-huh. he's at Great Bridge. Yeah. Average twenty, um, like six assists or something. Uh, very good lefty scorer. Yeah. Uh, Wesleyan is really wants him. That he'd be a really good addition. And see, that's a lot of things I don't think kids realize is, let's say AJ goes D three, mm-hmm. he has a three six yeah. and a high SAT score. So he's going to get scholarships. Yeah. You know, D3s don't have the athletic scholarships they can give, like, a D2, D1. But when you have academics, you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. So I'm like, man, when you tell me I can't afford school, I'm like, well, you should have had a 3.5, you know? Yeah, yeah. You could play anywhere with that. 
So it's a it's a really big deal for players mm -hmm. to keep their grades up. But he had a great year. Um, Khalil Davis, Wilson, mm -hmm. the I boy mean, could fly. I mean, <laughs> I mean, man, just just to see him last year and to just to see that Wilson team what they did last year mm -hmm. won like probably maybe four games, five games, maybe really four. They, yeah, I see, I won eighteen last year. games in four years. Wow. Something like that. Yeah, I wasn't they won what twenty something games this year. They were they were one of the best in the season. Yeah, eleven and zero at in, in the beginning of the season until they got their first loss to Norview. Like, mm -hmm. that's crazy. Well, with me then, with Davis, if that kid was like six nine, it's a wrap. <laughs> uh, he's just kind of an undersized big. He's kind of in the Chavis mold to me. Uh huh. Um, definitely had a great year though. I just. Another thing, and I guess great time to say this, if if you want to get known in the seven five seven, you gotta contact me, man. Like, because <laughs> a lot of these players reached out to me when I came on the scene, like, hey, oh. you know, I'm having a great year, come see me. Um, you know, I'm gonna go where the demand is. If you know, everyone on Twitter is telling me, oh, you need to be at this game, I'm oh. going there because I'm the seven five seven guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I can't be everywhere. I'm, gonna I'm, go I'm the same class. way. I'm the 757 <laughs> guy, but I can't be everywhere, man. I'll have people that work for me. I'm, I'm one person. Yeah, so we gotta, we gotta, we literally have to pay attention to Twitter, uh -huh. what people are texting us. So I'm going to go where they tell me to go. That's why I love prep classic stuff like that. Six, seven teams playing. I get to see them. I know, hey, I want to see this kid again. Yeah. Um, so you got to reach out to me. But um, Khalil Davis is very good. Shamar Yates, uh, from what I understand, he averaged like 25 last year. Very good two guard. How he translate to college, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know that um, either. But yeah. I can guarantee he plays hard. Uh -huh. um, very good mid range game. Plays defense. Had a great year. Um, push on Brevard. Uh, I think it's Woodside. Um, yeah. Walsh. Yeah. Walsh uh -huh. coaches Walsh. there. Yeah. Yeah. He is it Welsh or Walsh? Welsh. Welsh. Stefan right. Welsh. Yeah. Um, but he's about six foot. Super long though. Uh, uh -huh. He's probably got like six five, six six wingspan. Um, plays defense, average like eighteen and six, mm -hmm. um, and he runs with another good guard too. But um, he he just pulled an offer from uh, Mount Olive recently. Okay. So D I, did, I did see that. Yeah, D two is a decent um, area for him. Uh, very good season though. And then I had to put him on this list, man. Uh, Jordan Lewis really flew under the radar for people. He's at Cox. Um, Good basketball career for them. IQ. He. That's one of those IQ. kids, man. If we, if we, if we really think about it. If you put him on another team, or take just take him from Cox. What's Cox do? <laughs> Cox getting blown out by everybody. <laughs> like he, he's he can shoot though. Um, decent size. Mm -hmm. Very smart, like you said. Um, yeah. I could I couldn't ignore him. Like even if his team's not the greatest, yeah. you take. He almost beat uh, Kempsville by himself. Kempsville was a good team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was in high school, Kempsville sucked. <laughs> so when I came back on the scene, and they were like, Kempsville's good. Yeah, I was like, I got Kempsville having some players lately. They're not having them all at the same time. Yeah. But they've been getting it now. And then I think with their academy that they got, they got yeah. the entrepreneurship. So I think they're going to get a lot of kids, especially uh, with Sanders as a coach. Yeah. Yeah, so third team, <coughs> we had Calvin Thomas, uh, Oscar Smith's big. Oh, Lord. Yeah, he, I mean, uh, he put... I like, I like CJ. CJ yeah. funny, man. CJ he, he said he, he has a weird choice in, like, basketball players and rappers, but that's not my business. <laughs> he is funny on Twitter, but good kid. Uh, he's a big kid. I think when college, when they truly, like, shape his body, he's mm -hmm. going to be a monster on the boards. Yeah. Um, he was the rebound guy. You know, that's what uh -huh. they call him. Did the little things, very scrappy. Um, he's gonna have, he'll probably have a good career at Wilmington. I think he committed. Yeah, yeah, yeah um, he did. Yeah, so he's got perfect size and he was the blue play. Like, yeah, you're gonna hear he's a tall, he's originally a tall kid, so I'm happy for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like I said, though, you're gonna see a lot of Oscars. Like, kids like well with Tori, like well with Peterson. They, they originally told the kids, so I got, I got a lot of love. For him. Yeah, Tori Jordan made 13. <laughs> okay. Um, he held John Marshall's. Star guard Dennis Parker, freshman. Uh -huh. He held him to 11, scored 16 on him, and Parker's an ESPN ranked guard for his grade. Um, he he's been their defender the whole year. Uh -huh. He constantly like he doesn't get rattled at all. He took one bad shot this year. Uh, <laughs> we can't let that, that go. That shot is gonna haunt him. <laughs> <laughs> I seen him the next day, and I was like, man. 
I wish I was in that locker room. I know they gave it to you, bro. That yeah, was like yeah. that was a bad shot. Yeah, I mean bad shot. But not, but you know he's also the kid that is fine the next game. You know uh -huh. it's not going to haunt him. He's yeah, going to move yeah. on. That's that's a, that's a true thing. And he was he was a consistent defender, knockdown shooter for them. Uh -huh. uh, I know Kenyon's the shooter, but you couldn't knock Tory open. No, nah, yeah, he knocks down. He knocked down so. Uh, Tywan McKenzie, one of the uh -huh. best big men in seven five seven this year. Yeah, he had a great year the previous year. This year, Churchill wasn't really on the scene as much, mm -hmm. off and on. They have a beautiful gem, though. Oh, my God. They that just redid it. Good. And it was on 2K. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Mike Holland. And, and yeah, and he, he's one of those kids, man. He's just a victim of uh, being a classic big, but he's not tall enough. He's about 6'6". Oh. Six, six. Yeah. So, you know, you want to, if he was 6'8", six, 6'9", six, definitely D1. Mm -hmm. um, but he's getting looks regardless. Perfect uh, D2 big man. To me. Um, next up, Clint Wright Jr., Lakeland. Uh, smart player, knockdown shooter. Knockdown. He um, can shoot. Plays defense, plays smart, doesn't really take bad shots. Um, he he also played with some good players, um, mm -hmm. so he's a victim of that statistically, but he still put up numbers. Um, Tyler Chapman, Kings Fork. That kid was killing people all year just because they don't think about him when they think of Jaden. Yeah. So he's a knockdown shooter. Very smart defender, not the best defender, but he was a high IQ defender. Jumped the passing lanes a lot. Was the team captain. Um, he put up consistent numbers, man. That's hard to do when you got a yeah. kid shooting forty times a game. <laughs> <laughs> but, nah, he he's a good player, man. He's just you know he played on the best team. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Tim Montgomery. Uh -huh. I would have put him higher, but Tim never reached out to me, so I didn't get to see him as much. So you know, shout out to Coach Frank. Coach Frank was an advocate for him. He's like, dude, you can't leave him off the list. Yeah. So I gave him a Tim, nod. Tim is, Tim is, he plays the game right very good. I mean, especially you take him off the team that he's on, and there is no team. Okay. <laughs> I mean, and then la and the, the previous year before that, uh, his team won. They won a conference. Mm -hmm. I mean, you didn't even hear about Portsmouth Christian. You know what I'm saying? And they yeah. won a whole conference. Yeah, that's another thing people got to remember, man. I still think my list is better than uh, the pilots. Uh -huh. But I've only been on scene since December. Yeah. So they had a big head start on me. But I tried this. I, I probably saw 50, 60 games, mm -hmm. um, even in that you know, span of time. So I did my best. Like Kamari Artis, um, he was one of the more dangerous players. Mm -hmm. If he got going, he was that kid like, okay, he's going to catch fire. That's right. And I like him too. Yeah, he, he had a good year at the shooting guard position. Um, one kid definitely flew under the radar, Misha from Catholic. He's about 6'6". Six, six. I've seen him one time. You're talking about the shooter. Yes. Like, uh -huh. He can shoot. Like classic <laughs> European shooter. Like uh -huh. the boy can shoot. If you fall for it, he doesn't like really elevate on the jump shot. So uh -huh. pump fake gets people every time. One dribble pull up. Classic European shooter. Really good size. Has a 4.1. Mm. at Catholic, so he can play. Definitely going to get him in school. Yeah, yeah, he's got a couple offers. Um, he's one of those kids, man, and kids need to remember this, take the SAT early because uh -huh. um, he's, you know, he's foreign. I don't think he understood how important the SAT was, and it got canceled because mm. of corona. So, you know, he. I think he's going to get a waiver, but never, never, like, play that game, man. You gotta, if you take it early, too, you know you can get a better score. You know you can yeah, do it more, yeah. so... That's a big deal. Kenny Hodges, uh, Indian Rivers, big man. Uh -huh. uh, very bouncy. Um, I believe he's a kid that could do a lot more in a different system. But he held it down in the paint for a really good Indian River team yeah, this year. Yeah, yeah. Um, he, he was catching lobs, uh, rebounded very well, playing defense. Um, Caleb Peterson, Lansdown, mm -hmm. solid point guard. Played well against Bottoms. Um, put up decent numbers. You know, always got Donald hand the ball in the right place, especially the second <laughs> half. Definitely got him the ball in the second half. But yeah, I mean, that's my 2020. Um, you know, I spent a little more time on 2020 just because you know they See, definitely need it right now. Uh, yeah, they definitely do, man. I feel like this virus is definitely gonna hurt a lot of them now. But it's trans that and, and transfer and portal. Yeah, and then you know AU season, a lot of it, every a lot of stuff is canceled. I feel like a lot of kids gonna try to end up prepping or trying to do some type of extra year. But I mean, I this is how I look at it, and I'm I'm being dead serious. The only kid left on my like available seniors that I, I truly believe is D1 is Battle. Uh huh. 
So when you hit my phone and tell me you're trying to go D1 right now, if you haven't heard from a D1 coach, no. <laughs> if you got a D2 full ride, go D2. Worst case, you transfer. Uh -huh. Like, But it's free school, man. D2, I was talking to a D2, uh, really good guys over there in West Florida. Um, I was talking to him. I said, hey, man, this prospect, y'all, like, uh, he wants to go D1. And he said, what, what school is he looking at? I was like, well, I don't really know, man, but... <laughs> You know, he wants to go D1. He's like, well, tell him whoever he wants to go, they're afraid to play us. And that's true, man. A lot of these D2s can can compete with D1s. A lot of D3s can uh, compete with D2s. So I think, you know, that stigma of D3 is not, like, high level. That's not true because those coaches work, honestly, way harder than D2, mm -hmm. D1 because they got to get the kids that don't, you know, that don't go to that higher level. Um, so – it's competitive across the board. Yeah. And I think it's like 1% to 3% of kids play college basketball. Yeah. That's not a lot. So are you telling me all <laughs> 30 kids on here can play college ball this year? I'm like, I, like, I try. Like, yeah. I try to help them. Um, I'm trying to constantly expand my pipeline. But Battle, to me right now, is the only kid that's D1 for sure. And he doesn't even have an offer secured. So don't hit my phone saying, yo, I'm still trying to go D1. Because D1 coaches have told me, he said, hey, if we didn't reach out by now, we're probably not going to reach out. Mm -hmm. There's there's some schools, you know, with Battle's case, they just, some of them honestly assumed other schools were going to get them. Yeah. So they didn't offer. So uh, that that might go down the mystery of the 7 5 seven. I could see them in Conference USA. You know, I go to a lot of those ODU games, a lot of see a lot of the people they play, and I'm like, no, you telling me Battle could not play for ODU? I mean, he could, but I feel like ODU, they don't really, I don't know, they don't really recruit a kid from out here unless BCU offers them first, to me. I Is that weird? It. That's weird, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, like Darion Sebron, he's like, probably the best player in the area at yeah. the time, last year. Soon as he, uh, what, went prep or whatever, Got an offer from BCU. It was probably about two hours later. ODU on the phone. Didn't they do that with? <laughs> didn't they do that with Frank? Oh, on the phone. Uh, That's crazy. Frank the Tank. I think they did that too. With him. Frank. Yeah. Where it was like either Akron or VCU called him. It was one of those. And then ODU was like, "Oh, hey man, we really want you." <laughs> But that's so weird to me. Like I said, you should just take who you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You shouldn't wait for someone else. I don't understand that. Like I'm telling all these low majors, I've. I'm not going to put them on complete blast because, you know, uh -huh. some of them might be subscribers. But they told me D1 prospects or D1 programs, oh, I don't think we're good enough for Jordan. Like, dude, what if I told you you could get LeBron on your team? And you say, <laughs> like, ah, LeBron might be better than us. So build your program. Yeah. You get, like, worst case, you offer a kid. Has a great year and leave, but it's going to. Not even that, man. Let's say. Let's say I know how good he is. I just throw battle to offer. He doesn't come. I didn't expect him to come. Uh -huh. Might as well offer him. Because guess what? If he does come, you have a great situation now. Yeah. And, you know, he stayed at Norfolk Collegiate all four Low years. Easy. Low easy. Even when they said it wasn't a winning program. Uh -huh. That tells me the kid will stay. Especially if he's putting up numbers. I don't uh -huh. see why. I'm, I'm telling you, man, if he comes to Conference USA or has a chance to play these local teams, he's going to kill them. Yeah. He already told me, he said, look, man, a lot of these local teams, like, just aren't showing me love or, like, mm -hmm. didn't show me the proper love. And if I play them, <laughs> it might be bad. I mean, I understand that. But yeah. for juniors, man, uh, juniors have a really good class, too. I put it 20, uh, 20 kids, two teams. First team, Jelani, mm -hmm. uh, Norview had a really good year. Um, perfect size for a combo guard. Fat. Can shoot long. He he would have had a big. I can't even say he's gonna have a big summer. <laughs> I don't know what the summer holds, but he would have had a big summer. Um, Cam Edmonds, Western Branch. Western Branch. I didn't get to go see him this year, but him. Yeah, he was. He's, he's a very player. good player. Uh, I met him in person last week. Very nice kid. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's very underrated for seven five seven. Is we have high character kids. Yeah. Like, these kids aren't going to be problems in programs. They're, like, really good kids. Um, Dominic Stanford, Kentsville, he's going to make a lot of noise next year. That's a fact. I think he's another push team, uh, kid. Yeah, him and Cam. Uh-huh. Him and Cam are. Yeah. And I guess we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Some of these teams are coming up. Yeah. I mean, it's 
Dom is Dom is tough. Yeah, Dom, Dom is really tough. good size too. He's he's almost six five. Um, I hope athletic. you got I hope you got Eli up there, Kennedy. You know what that is? Uh, Greenman? Greenman. Yeah, yeah shooter, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not the pilot, bro. <laughs> uh, Christian Moore, um, um, one of the toughest point guards, yeah. pe- like regardless of class in 757. Um, this was a serious like conversation I had at uh, one of the AAU workouts there talking about Jaden. Mm-hmm. I said, what's Jaden do better than Christian Moore? And they're like, I guess he shoots more. I was like, that's because if Christian takes 30 shots, Coach Hall is going to run him. So, but they, I mean, he's a very good player, very yeah. smart player. I think easily low major. Mm-hmm. Um, good size, about 6'1". Can shoot, but he, he has a mid-range too. He didn't just have deep range. Yeah, um, yeah. And he's a very smart point guard. He's the only guard that really went out of it with battle this year. Um, and that's impressive to me because mm-hmm. he, he's a very crafty player. Um, he, he will have a monster senior season. Um, Quentin Livingston, also like I said, cute. He averaged. He ended up averaging like sixteen and eight. Um, that's, that's some good numbers when you're playing with the best player. In <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can keep saying it. You won't convince me, but you keep saying it. But uh, nah, he's he's a very good prospect. Yeah, he's a good kid too. Yeah. Um, Alan Struthers, Menchville, one of the trio of guards. Um, Man, I seen him play Oscar Smith the prior year, and I was like, this kid. He was. If he rounds his game out, he's going to be a problem. Uh, very good size, yeah. mature, um, lanky, athletic. You know, he had a good year. Uh, Jacob Cooper. Mm-hmm. Um, Jake. Yeah. Jake is tough. Jake, uh, he was the leader for Green Run. I didn't. Green Run didn't really communicate with me this season, so I didn't uh-huh. see him as much as I wanted to. Likewise. Yeah, so I had to kind of, you know, watch tape. But he's a very good player, and he, you know, a lot of coaches around here vouch for that. Mm-hmm. Um, Sterling White, Catholic, mm-hmm. flew under the radar. He could shoot. Really good shooter. Had almost 40 in a game this year. Um, consistent shooter. Should have a good senior year. 4.0. Um, 4.0. Yeah. 4.0? I love I, Hey, man, you got the grades. I can sell you to anybody. Yeah. Um, Bryson Spell. Uh, I like Bryce. I don't know why. Perfect, perfect package as far as a player for a stretch four. Uh-huh. He oh, could man. he could probably do more, um, uh-huh. but he's also playing a really good team. I expect him to do a lot next year. Um, but even still, a good shooter, defends. Um, I feel like he could have a really good AAU season if he goes to the right, plays with the right team. I know he plays with Team Loaded, I believe. Mm-hmm. But I feel like, I don't know. But I feel like... He could have a really good season because of his height, because of his athleticism, and he he's huge. Just six nine. Yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> perfect package, man. Yeah. It's just he's not. I don't know if it's because he's got talent around him. He doesn't have to put up the numbers, but I definitely think senior year he'll round it out. Um, uh, Kaiwan Odin, uh, Khalil's little brother. He's mm-hmm. a dog. Uh, yeah. Just as good as his brother. Might yeah. end up better. Uh-huh. Same size as him. I know that's a problem for you, but he's a gunslinger, man. I remember uh, Chavis had a big dunk, mm-hmm. got the crowd into it with like a minute left, went up two. Kai went down and hit a 30-footer, yeah. just like that. Did not care. He's cold-blooded, so he had, he had a great year. Um, Matthew Nunez, uh, Walsingham, already has D1 offers, 6'10". Big dude. Um, he's but big. The thing is, man, this is a guard-heavy area. And they guards put up numbers. Mm-hmm. He just doesn't put up the same numbers, but he's gonna easily go D one because of that side. He can't coach six ten, man. Like, but he's a good player. He's mature too. Very nice kid. Um, Elijah, like you said, yes, shooter. Um, he, when I seen him play versus Norview, he just has. He looks like an NBA player the way he runs down the court. Like just his stance. Like I don't know. It's just some. He's a lefty man. His lefties are blessed, but. <laughs> He, sure. Yeah, he can it. shoot. Um, Kawan Coleman, um, he runs with uh, uh, Quishan. Very good shooter. Already has D1 looks. Um, pretty good guard. He's like 16 and 5 this year. Mm. Um, very good one two punch. Um, Adrian Shaw, a lot of people don't talk about him. He's about 6'6. Six, six. What school do you go to? FC. Okay. Perfect left hook, perfect right hook. Mm. Carves out space in the paint. He plays defense. Mm. Um, it's just he's six six, so you're like not really a D one big man size, but he's extending his range on his jumper. He's strong, um, easily D two. Um, 
I like the kid. He had a really good year. Um, James Prescott, Wilson, when he came back, they started really clicking. Yeah, his injury definitely hurt him this year, but he definitely is another guard that I say that plays the right way. If like he could put up numbers, and there's games that he's put up numbers, but he, I feel like he loves to see his team do well. Like I mean, you, he's a point guard, man. Yeah, yeah, I you know. love to see that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> um, Farrow Lasseter from Bethel, uh -huh. a very good guard, played well with uh, Banks and him were a one two. Yeah. Um, Jaden Eason from uh, Grassfield flies on the radar because they weren't that good this year, but he put up really good numbers, about six five, almost six six. Mm -hmm. Very strong kid. Um, might be transferring. I don't know yet, um, but if he does, uh, I think he, he's kind of got the Chavis issue where. We don't know how good he is because of how he plays for his team. Okay. But when I saw him at AAU workouts, he, he could shoot, runs the floor very well. Easily D2 prospect for a big man. Um, we have Mason from Kellum. Um, I haven't seen him a lot. He's the big white kid. I'm not going to butcher his <laughs> last name. But he, he's one of those kids, man. Undersized big man, but he plays hard. Mm -hmm. um, rebound machine, double-double guy. Um, he put up numbers. Um, Jason Harris from Minchville. Um I know they have a lot of guards, but he had to hold down the paint at about 6'6". He did a very good job of that. You know, Big men, the undersized big men kind of are underrated in 7'5'7". Uh -huh. um, they can still play D2, and they uh, they do a lot for their teams. They might not score a whole oh, bunch, right. but they do everything else. Um, and then my final one for 2021 is uh, Kamari Spencer from NSA. I think he's a better football player than basketball player, but he, he's about 6'4". Plays really hard for NSA. He was their rebound guy, hustle guy, defense mm -hmm. guy. I had to put him on the team. Um, finally, we got my underclassmen. This is a year, man. I'm pretty sure around your time, too, we had a lot more freshman stars uh -huh. and even sophomore stars. We had some good sophomores this year, but I remember freshmen being a factor even in my time. And I felt like this year we didn't have many freshmen high tier players at least getting shine in yeah. the area. I mean, Unless you can name a few, I mean, I only have one or two. Not a lot of freshmen. It wasn't a lot of. It wasn't a lot of freshmen this year. Um, I'm trying to think. Definitely not in this. Not that I know of. I know Kingsport had a freshman. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's no have? slight to the freshman class. Mm -hmm. It's just we have a lot of talent it, above it. Yeah. Uh -huh. So they get they'll they'll have their shine later, but. So 2022-2023, first team, I have Kenyon Giles. You already knew that was going to be up there. He's that kid, man. When he was off, uh -huh. Oscar Smith died. Like <laughs> They lost when he was off. Uh, Jay Knapps, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Donald Hand Jr., Kanye Clary, Caleb Brown from NSA. can really shoot, plays defense. Yeah, he's a bucket. Uh, Greg Melvin, only a sophomore from a Cape, 6'7", big. Uh, he's going to have... Big, that's a big front court. He's original seven run, run kid. And then he went there. Oh yeah, Mark Hall will stay your player. <laughs> You're not safe. Like <laughs> second team, I had Kendon Peebles. Who I already talked about. George Cutler flies under the radar for Cape Henry. About six one, really good handles. Might have better handles than Christian Moore. Mm. Uh, lefty gets in the lane easily and a very good passer. And he will defend you. Uh, he's not afraid to guard anyone. Um, Elijah White. Kentsville, yep. Love he him. shoots a lot. Love him. Good playmaker. As he matures, he should be really good. Um, Fast man, he got moves. Yeah, he's quick. George Beal Jr., Kings Fort kid. I think he has a high ceiling. About six three. Very good player. Running with Jaden, so you know, doesn't get as much shine, but he's just as dangerous. Um, Ryan Height. I didn't know he was a freshman, but Kings Fort. <laughs> he can shoot. Plays defense. He and he's already built like a you know upperclassman. I think he's going to be very good. Yeah. Um, final ones were George Petaway, um, NSA's point guard. He's a five-star running back, but very good playmaker. Um, and then Sam Brennan from Collegiate runs with Boo. Um, very mature as a freshman. Hits big shots. Gets steals. Sam, that's no go, right? Yeah. 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 That's my 757 team, man. Definitely better than a pilot. I feel like Sam should have stayed with Tim this year at Portsmouth Christian. Is that where he was? Mm hmm. Because he was getting burned and he was killing. He probably, had, he probably averaged the most points. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> he should have stayed. Cause, I mean, Tim, Tim, 
I'm like, I'm, he get you the ball. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I felt like he would have got a, the ball a lot. Yeah, I mean, he, <laughs> he played well. Especially just that year. And then this year, do whatever he wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's going to have the reins next year with Battle gone. Mm -hmm. um, played well this year, but I like his uh, maturity at his age. Mm -hmm. um, definitely, you know, wouldn't hurt if he grows a little more, but that's almost every guard and stuff I've done. So. <laughs> but nah, man, uh, yeah, sophomore class, though. Yeah, they're going to be very fun to watch. Unfortunately, you know, we're going to touch on this corona. Yeah. I, we won't see them. I don't know if we'll see them this summer. But Do you, um, do you think if, if AAU is allowed to play this year, uh, this summer, do you think it's going to help? Or could it help some of the seniors or classes coming up or juniors classes coming up? Um. Yeah, so what I think will happen if we have – Let's say June, July, August, they decide to make that the period. First of all, this is scary. Jordan Battle told me he's going to run AAU if he doesn't have an offer <laughs> secure. So you're going to have these grown seniors yeah. coming out, showing out. Um, what I think as a result, I think every event, it does not matter the event. Mm -hmm. I think ev like all the coaches are going to be there. Yeah. I think there's going to be coaches everywhere. Because not everyone, dude, with the transfer portal, I know there's a lot of people transferring, so mm -hmm. they're picking up college guys. That also means they're leaving. Yeah. So a lot of these schools are like, I just talked to one the other day. He's like, yo, we just lost two players. <laughs> he's like, we didn't see it coming, man, but mm -hmm. we just lost them. And then we lost two more to high majors. So there's shots. Um, prep needs to be considered. Um, kids don't talk about JUCO. Uh -huh. But... There's a lot of really good JUCO players. Yeah. Um, especially, even if you only do a year, man. Like, you do a year JUCO. Um, there's a kid going from JUCO to the draft this year. Mm. So, like, you still get noticed. Like, people watch. There's, like, pipelines for JUCO. Uh -huh. There's a lot of D1 JUCOs, D2, D3. So, you just run with a really good JUCO. So, getting, like, you said you just started this December. How, how have you been making your connections Wait, uh, you want to hear the secret, start. man? So I sat with Jordan, Jordan Battle called me, and he's like, hey, Zach, how you, how you, how you talking to these colleges? I was like, yo, sit on the phone with me, watch the process. This is literally all I do. This is why, like, on a serious note, I get kind of annoyed with high school coaches because mm -hmm. they seem to think colleges always come to you. It's, it's a two-way street. Um, I will go on Twitter. Yeah. I will find an assistant coach whose DMs are open. Yeah. And then I'll go to suggested, and I'll keep going. If their DMs are open, I'll shoot them a DM. Hey, I'm a writer. I got a bunch of talent around here. I'll do that for two straight hours. Um, not only am I helping these kids, um, you know, build my pipeline with college coaches, which helps prep hoops. Uh -huh. um, and, yeah, it's just one or two hours just constantly branching out, constantly contacting. I usually make the first point of contact. Uh -huh. um, and it's easy for me because I'm a scout. Yeah, I love a lot of these kids. Like I said, I talk to Jordan Battle almost every day, but I'm objective too. You know, I can tell. I can tell you like, oh yeah, Jordan Battle's. He's not a Kentucky player. Like I'll tell you that. But you know, that when they sometimes hear from parents, especially, especially parents, <laughs> some parents are wild. But you know, you know, a parent might hit them up. Hey, my kid should be a five star. You should definitely do one for sure. When they talk to me, they're like, okay. I, what I do is I introduce what I've said about other kids they know about, mm -hmm. and they'll understand I know what I'm talking about. So they'll ask me about my prospects, and, you know, I'll go through it with them. When, if it's a parent, you know, they don't instinctively trust that because a parent, I call it mom goggles. Like, <laughs> they just see it differently. They see their, I was lucky growing up. My mom never lied to me about how good I was. <laughs> so I knew, you know, I wasn't going to the NBA, but when they hear it from a scout, they're like, okay, this guy's not going to lie to us about a player and what I usually have to have ready if I want a serious connection with the college is a uh, film film that's hard to get mm -hmm. some of these schools don't even record their games yeah and that's a bad thing that's, so that's a, crazy that's a bad thing especially with this era you know what I'm saying I would you know how easy it is <laughs> like you, you can live stream it on Twitter from your I'm, phone yeah <laughs> like just, anyone can do it yeah and you get better watching film mm -hmm. and so you know, do you have any full game film? I'm like, oh, I gotta go hit up a coach. I try to have that ready now, but what I always love to introduce first to a coach is GPA and SAT or ACT. Mm -hmm. 
let them know, hey, this kid's a, almost basically a two-way player, classroom and game. You can trust them. Um, and we go from there. But, I mean, it sounds kind of funny the way I, I try to branch out, but just in one day last week, I started a pipeline of nine D1s. Mm -hmm. And so I'll have that connection for the 2021 and so on. Um, you know, but when I'm doing it and I'm just sitting there doing that, I'm like, a high school coach can't do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I, think, I feel like it's more, the, I would say they would probably say it's, it's your job. And I don't know. I don't know. I think everybody's just lazy. They just, they just yeah, man, lazy. Like, like I said, my main job, I work with kids. So instinctively, I like to help kids. I think that's all it takes mm -hmm. to help these kids. You just got to want to. And from what I'm seeing, man, it doesn't look like a lot of high school coaches around here want to do that. They they want to take that second step. How does Justin Fatherly average 26 points <laughs> and these colleges don't know who he is? Yeah. J uh, Jordan Battle, he's averaged like for his career. He had 2,800 career points. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> I had, it was like Dayton or someone didn't even have him in the database. And I'm like, dude, it's colleges can't, you got to understand these there's so many kids. Yeah. Yes, there's so many kids. It's it's just like not possible for them to see everybody. That's not their fault. I can't blame them. West Florida, the D2, man, I had to start the pipeline from here. And they're like, oh, my God, you have a crop of kids. Honestly, we just can't afford to send coaches out there. We no. just don't have time to send coaches out there. That's why the film is so important. Yeah, man, you got to have that full game film. What you like to do, you have three to four minutes of highlights. And immediately after they like what they see, give your best game. What I've learned is best game helps, but if your best game is against a really bad team, uh -huh. give me your second best game if it's a big, <laughs> good team. Like they want to see you play someone. Uh -huh. um, battle is a victim of that. Sometimes they play really bad teams, but you know Cape Henry's no joke. Yeah. Those schools are no joke. So that's how I've been pipelining. I don't think it's that hard, but it also at the same time it's sad that I can do that, but. High school coaches can't do that. I'm sure when I make this snippet, they they gonna see, it and they, I feel like they'll follow your lead because I feel like we do have a lot of kids in the seven by seven that just don't go to school or wind up going JUCO, and then they all play on the same JUCO team, and then they just stop playing, and then it, it's just... crazy because <laughs> well, I guess me and you, like when I was in high school, I didn't look, I didn't, I just didn't see stuff like that, you know, because mm -hmm. we never we never talked to colleges ourselves, yeah, so. I just never once thought, oh, we're under recruited because we had Devin Hall, Marcus Evans. Um, first of all, you want to say Jaden Epps is going pro? <laughs> I don't know if Marcus Evans is going pro. Marcus Evans was different. Yeah. I remember. Did you ever see Marcus Evans play? You never saw Marcus Evans. Just what? Uh, I would. I wasn't recording then, so it was just what I seen make plays do. Well, you seen him on make plays, right? Yeah, and then that, I seen him. That was different in uh in college. Yeah, yeah, he was a monster. Like, <laughs> there's this one story. It's a funny story. You know who Chris Clark is? Plays uh -huh. for Texas Tech. His team, yeah. Yeah, team. me and my buddy played Chris Clark and his buddy, and we beat him at PA Rec. Talk trash for the longest time because you know he he was good. Mm -hmm. But you know when we were talking trash, he's like, "Yo, I can get Marcus up here." Like, we we <laughs> but like I mean, it's hard going. That just shows you how hard it is going pro. Marcus Evans had like two thousand career points in college, mm -hmm. and he might not go pro. Yeah. So when these kids, you know, low SAT, low GPA, think they're going to go to the league, man, it's a lot of evidence that that's hard. James McAdoo, they thought he was Tim Duncan coming out yeah. of high school. He's out of the league. Mm -hmm. he, got, he got that ring, though. Yeah, he got, I mean, <laughs> yeah, he got a ring. But it, it's just, and it's, it's sad, but it's crazy how fast the game of basketball will leave you. Mm -hmm. Like, Trust me. basketball doesn't stop for anybody yeah. no one's safe like i learned that when i hurt my ankle um i, I was fine it took a long i didn't realize a couple things happened i didn't realize um i worked out so much mm -hmm. since i was like eight years old i thought i had a fast metabolism so when i couldn't walk i was eating like normal dude i put on like 30 pounds in like two months okay. i was like oh my god <laughs> I thought I had a fast metabolism, and I realized, man, when you're a hooper, you're at it every day. Yeah, um, you burn so many calories. Yeah, stuff like that, man. And grades, um, if you can't hack it, 
you just fall off the face of the earth when it comes to basketball. Mm -hmm. uh, every sport, actually. Um, those are the things I tell kids if I can give them any lesson is to focus on that because basketball only takes you so far. Me and you found our own lane with basketball, uh -huh. but a lot of these kids aren't writers. They don't have an eye for mixtape stuff. Make it like I tried to make a couple mixtapes for the kids, bro. <laughs> it's not easy. People think it's easy. It's it not is, easy. They think it's, uh, hey, make me a mixtape. It's going to be done in 20 minutes. No, bro. <laughs> no, with my computer? Nah. It was <laughs> but it was not. Nah, it's... It's hard, and you know, some of these kids aren't, they don't have, like, the in basketball IQ to be a coach after. Mm -hmm. um, so you got to always, man, you always got to have a lane ready yeah. for when this this is over. Like, I didn't even think, like, I, I took public speaking three times in college. Mm -hmm. Like, me, me and you talking, like, I can never see myself doing something like this, but I just... I just went for it, man. Man, I've done so much weird stuff. Because I'm 23 right now. I'm officially a published author. Mm -hmm. um, I was a ranked debater. Um, I researched for some of the biggest YouTubers out there. Like, so I do weird stuff, man. Like, I told myself when I got hurt, I'm like, yo, I'm going to do stuff people don't think I can do. Mm -hmm. And I, I wish, you know, athletes would approach it that way. Kobe Bryant, rest in peace. Hated him watching him because I'm a diehard Spurs fan. But... Uh -huh. The man was doing like six or seven different things even during basketball. Yeah, you gotta you gotta be the complete package, man. You can't just hoop. Um, I'm hoping you know we can bring that message to kids in the seven five. Um, yeah, but you know, if there's anything I tell these kids, D one's not always it, man. Uh -huh. D two full ride, free education. You get the hoop, have the best time. Trust me, free education is the best. I'm still, I'm, some school loans ain't no joke, bro. Hopefully Corona can help you with that. They're talking about it. I don't, I don't know, but Corona, man, it's it's hit different. I it's crazy. I thought um, I didn't think it was gonna be this bad, and you said you seen it coming. Yeah. So first of all, to be honest, um, a lot of people. Okay, like regardless of politics, so serious. Like I I took poli sci as a major, mm -hmm. but I'll say regardless of politics. It was very hard not to like Obama, just as a person. Dude was always on Sports Center, like cool. He hooped. I love the guy. I didn't care about politics. Like I love that guy. When swine flu went down, nobody cared. Mm -hmm. I think there's two factors. One, Obama was very likable. Two, social media wasn't popping like it is now. Yeah. I got swine flu. Swine flu was bad. <laughs> I lost 12 pounds in uh -huh. just over a week. I got that and mono at the same time. And that was a complete system destruction. It wasn't just respiratory. And thousands of people died from it. Way more got it. No one cared. They had to shut my school down. Mm. Like, they shut it down and played it off as the flu. But, like, no one cared, man. Like, everyone's like, oh, you get sick, you get sick. Whatever, we'll keep it moving. And Corona hit, Twitter popped off real quick. <laughs> like, and regardless of politics, man, yeah. people love to hate Trump. So yeah. they'll be like, oh, this is his fault. Shut everything down. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, I knew we had to shut that schools down and AAU because a lot of kids don't get corona mm -hmm. as far as the sickness, but they're little bombs. They walk around, grandma's got it now, mm -hmm. grandpa's got it now, dad's got it now. So their kids are out here bodying people, they don't even know it. So I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you kind of have to shut school now. Would I have shut it down for the rest of the year? No. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, First of all, Florida's gonna fall off the map. <laughs> Florida is terrible, man. I got some family. I've lived, I'm military, so I moved from Florida, Texas, to Virginia. Florida is reckless with it, man. When I saw like just a week or two ago, spring breakers out mm -hmm. there, I was like, man, they, gonna... <laughs> they will. We might as well just cut off Florida, man. They're gonna take that out. But it's, I don't know how I feel about it, man. Because on one hand, you're like, if they're willing to risk it natural selection mm -hmm. let them do what they like if people are willing to risk aau okay but then again there's a lot of people that aren't willing to risk it that are still subjected to it mm -hmm. because those people come back home and they yeah. spread it everywhere i think that's the biggest problem they don't want the death toll i mean imagine that and then everybody go back home and you play aau i mean this kid's from everywhere they just go back home and bring it to Man, one one of the things I do, I do think ridiculous. Like uh, when NBA players caught it, and everyone's like, "Oh my god!" 
that's the healthiest man in the world. <laughs> if anyone's going to survive like, an illness, yeah. it's an NBA player. We need to worry about, like, Italy, that's a little um, misleading because a lot of those people are old, uh -huh. retired. So when they got hit, that's what this virus is bopping on. So yeah. a lot of their people died. I'm not saying, like, we should downplay corona, but that's where a lot of the numbers come from. And I do feel like a lot more people have it than we realize. Mm -hmm. And it's just dormant. Mm -hmm. So the numbers, I can tell y'all, numbers is always going to be off. But regardless, just the social media fear factor, you can't get on Twitter <laughs> without seeing COVID-19. Anywhere. I mean, anywhere. Yeah. I mean, just everywhere. But the, like, just with that existing, the social media aspect, it's going to keep us shut down for a long time. That's why, that's the only reason I called it. I was like, the way people react... They're like, there's no way we could have prevented this first off. Yeah. You can't just, like, people don't understand, man. You can't just, like, shut down a country and be cool. Yeah. Like, <laughs> people have jobs, man. Kids don't realize it. Uh -huh. Hey, you kids, I, and it's very hard on these kids to not play basketball. But uh -huh. I, I also see it differently, man. When I grew up, we went outside and hooped. I know. That's what a lot of them was doing, and it was shut that down, too. Well, I mean, yeah. like, you find, you find a hoop, and if you don't have one in the driveway, I, I had to save up and get a hoop. You get a hoop, get your own hoop, walk. You can still walk down the street, hoop on yeah. your friend's hoop. Um, that's what we did. Oh, man, I was out there hours on end. These kids, man, they got trainers. Yeah. They got their own gyms they got access to. It's, it's a different age, man. Like, we, well, I'm also from Texas. So, like, <laughs> Texas sports were different. Yeah. But you're seeing a lot of kids, though get back to the natural stuff which is cool to see you know just going outside getting reps mm -hmm. playing hard um it is funny a lot of those nice basketballs we got for just the gym those are going to be done yeah. by the time COVID's gone. but it's i think this transfer portal um and corona is really killing the 2020 class and i think one thing we should take from this for the future classes is if you got, if, if I don't care what school offers you, let's say a really low D2 school offers you and you not like, let's say I know I'm above that. I'm still saying, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll consider it. I love you gave me an offer. Um, I will get back to you. You always got to keep that all. I know plenty of kids, man. They t they are like, oh, no, thanks. I'm not mm -hmm. interested. Right now, Corona hit. No, they, you, none of that. They have nothing. I know. All because you didn't know how to speak. You didn't know how to be like grateful. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. it's just the simple things like and we know for a fact colleges hop on once other colleges hop on. Uh -huh. So that's literally starts the avalanche for you. So I mean, I hope they learn, you know, accept well, that's a bad word, but like <laughs> take every offer you get, keep it. Cause one day, man, that might be all you got. And so Corona is going to teach us that. I think AAU will still happen. Mm -hmm. um, probably June, late June, July. Um, I hope the NCAA does not get get rid of the transfer rule where you have to sit out. Yeah. I think that will do too much damage to this class for high school. Because when you first see it, it's one of those things on the surface where you're like, Man, these kids didn't have an opportunity to finish their career. Give them another year. Or let them transfer. Time waits for no one, man. Oh, no. We got these high school <laughs> kids coming in. They yeah. need their... What about their chance? Uh -huh. like, their chance isn't any less than yours. And then they get less and less scholarships, offers. To offer and it's like, dude, like, yeah, we're mad we didn't get to see them play in the playoffs. But they did play a whole season. Mm -hmm. We have to be honest, like. I, the only sport I really care about is basketball. But i got to be honest, like, these kids, you don't need a fifth year. <laughs> you know I mean? you, there's, kids should not be getting, it's basically like trading. Like, they're trading players to each other without penalty. That's dangerous, man. That teaches kids they can just hop ship when things get hard or mm -hmm. it doesn't go their way. I, I, there's so many negatives to it. I think it's like one of those on the surface, you're like, oh, this is cool. Mm -hmm. But then you realize, like, this has a lot more damaging effect to basketball. Mm -hmm. Well, how can people uh, create their pipeline with you so you can get that? Oh, Zach Prefus, man. I'm on Twitter. Um, 
I don't think I've ever ignored a DM. Um, a lot of times I'll talk, I, I reach out to you. Yeah. Um, like if I know you're doing stuff in the 757, I'm very open to it. If you're a kid, you don't feel like anyone's paying attention, reach out to me, I'll look into you. I'll spread your name. Um, it's it's not and be hard. honest, and you'll be honest with them. Yeah, I won't hurt your feelings. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm more likely to hurt a parent's feeling uh -huh. than a kid, because yeah. a kid's a kid. But if parents come crazy with it, I mean, I'll tell them like, hey. But I, when I do it, man, I want you to be a realist. Because mm -hmm. if you're not real with yourself, you're not going to go anywhere. Yeah. You're going to sink your own ship. So, I mean, I'll give you feedback. Um, there's some kids, man, hit me up about the rankings. I'll tell y'all personally, I don't care about rankings. I don't think rankings really matter because it's all about what's this school need. Mm -hmm. Jordan Battle is one of the best guards around. A lot of schools have guards. Yeah. Is, you know, a 6'10 better than him? No. Like, they're not better skill-wise, but they're 6'10. They That's play a different position. It's about mm -hmm. needs. So, I kids, I wouldn't let... Sure, you can let it motivate you. That is one thing that bothers me, man. When I see like a five star make a video and they're like, shout out to my haters and doubters. It's like, bro, you think Zion Williamson had haters like that? Like, everyone didn't know he was big time. Like, yeah. I do hate stuff like that. But if it motivates you, sure. But rankings aren't that big of a deal. Um, I think what matters is putting in the work. Because mm -hmm. um, you could be ranked really high, man. And it's just off potential. Um, a lot of times that's, I've noticed the games changed a lot. Um, in basketball to where it went from they would take a kid they knew what he could do coming in mm -hmm. and it went to they will take a kid they think they can do this mm -hmm. when they get to college even the NBA started doing that yeah. that's how we ended up with Kwame Brown <laughs> <laughs> but yeah man if, if y'all want to reach out Zach Prep Hoops on Twitter um, I usually give my number from there I got my email up there mm -hmm. um, send me film you know it doesn't matter Easy to reach.